Hello scientific audience, in this video we are going to learn all the ray diagrams of the image formed by the concave mirror. Now this is a very short video and we are going to run very quickly to all the ray diagram cases, right? So first of all this is the concave mirror and its reflecting surface is inside, the shining or the polished surface or the silver surface is outside. Please remember that objects are to be kept on the left hand side of the pole of the mirror never ever put the object on right hand side and make the ray diagrams it will be totally incorrect so the first case is that the object is at infinity so when the object is at infinity the rays coming from the object are parallel and they are parallel to themselves and they are they may or may not be parallel to the principal axis so this is case one in which the rays are par parallel to one another as well as they are parallel to principal axis and we do know the fact that after reflection the reflected rays they pass through the focus so that means the reflected rays they meet at focus so when they are meeting the image is always real and inverted when the reflected rays meet the image is always real and the real images are always inverted now the image is formed at focus the object is at infinity now the size is very very small now to understand that right you need to uh, hold on for a couple of minutes when i take up the next diagram and i will again come back to this slide so this is our pending part that the image is highly diminished please just remember you are supposed to use this word highly only when if the object is at infinity or the image is at infinity right all right so here again in the case two we have the object is at object at infinity so this time the rays are parallel to themselves but the rays are not parallel to principal axis so in this case what happens is the ray which directly hits the pole so in that case the principal axis becomes the normal that is due to the fact that all the normals will pass through c so that means if this is your meter right and this is your center of curvature that is c so if you say that if this is the incident ray then first of all the normal must pass through c at the same angle there is a reflected ray on the opposite side of the normal so since this is the point of incidence the pole and from the pole this blue colored line principal axis itself passes through c so that it becomes normal so at the same angle you have the reflected ray that two reflected rays this is reflected ray number one and this is reflected ray number two so both the rays meet over here so now this time the image is not on the focus the image is formed outside the focus so we call that as focal plane object at infinity image is real and inverted that is due to the fact that both the reflected rays are actually meeting again i will come back to this later after a couple of minutes now the third case here you will start understanding about the size of the image okay so the object is shown by an arrow which is upright never make the uh, object below the principal axis so two rays will come out from the object from the head of the object this time the object is beyond c all right now the first ray which is parallel to the principal axis after reflection it will pass through focus so this is my reflected ray number one and the second reflected ray since the incident ray is passing through f so the reflected ray will become parallel to the principal axis so you can very well see that these two reflected rays they meet over here now comes the size of the image see from where these two incident rays came out from the head so the image of the head will be formed over here now since this is an inverted image because it is real real why because reflected rays are meeting and see now the point if the point where these two reflected rays meet had it been it be somewhere over here that means the image would be longer had it been this point over here then the image would still have been very very long now just the opposite had it been the image had it been these two rays the reflected rays if they meet over here that means this smaller is the size of the image if this point lies on the principal axis just imagine how small the image could have been right so the point of intersection of the reflected rays is the head and how far away from the principal axis decides the height of the image so in this case the image is slightly smaller than the object and we call that image as diminished image 
Now, in this case, why did I say the image to be highly diminished? Because the point where these two rays are meeting has to be below the principal axis, has to be below the principal axis to get a bigger image. But it is on the principal axis, so very, very tiny image. So, we call that as highly diminished image. Now, here, why did I say highly diminished? Because you are looking at sun and stars because the sun and stars are at infinite distance. So, compared to that size, the image size is extremely low. That's why we call this image as highly diminished. So, please remember when the object is at infinity, image is at infinity, we call that as highly diminished image. Now, the next case is the object at C. So, when the object is at C, there are two rays which are going to come out. Now, after reflection, this ray will pass through focus and this incident ray which passes through the focus, they meet at this point. So, that is exactly below C and you get the image which is real and inverted. The image is also at C, object at C as well as the height of the image is same as that of the height of the object. Moving ahead, now the object is brought slightly closer to the pole. So, again two rays, one ray parallel to the principal axis, another passing through focus. After reflection, this ray passes through focus and the another one becomes parallel. They, be, they both meet at this particular point and you can see that the image is behind, beyond C. It is longer and the longer images are said as enlarged or magnified. Real and inverted because reflected rays are meeting. The image is beyond C. The object is between F and C. Now, the sixth case. Here, the object is kept at F. We will pull out two rays. One which is parallel to the principal axis, another one which directly hits the pole. As I said earlier that this blue line which is the principal axis behaves as the normal because the normal has to pass through C. So, at the same angle, you will get this incident ray I1. This is the reflected ray at the same angle. So, these two angles are the same and of course, this ray which is parallel to principal axis after reflection, it will pass through focus. Now, these two reflected rays R1 and R2 are perfectly parallel. Now, when two rays are parallel, we believe that they are going to meet at infinity. So, if they meet, the image is real and inverted. The image is formed where these two rays are going to meet. So, at infinity, object is at F. Why highly enlarged? That you need to understand. Suppose these two rays meet over here. So, this is the point where the head of the image is formed. So, so long image is going to be the form. Now, had it been this point over here, longer image, just imagine what will happen if these two rays meet at infinity. Extremely enlarged or highly magnified image is the answer to the problem. So, that means do remember highly word has to be used when the object or the image is at C. And the last case, the object is kept between F and O, sorry, F and the pole. So, two rays we are going to pull it out. Now, after reflection, both rays are diverging. Now, this is a wonderful case in which these two reflected rays are not meeting. So, if reflected rays do not meet, always a virtual image is formed. And please note that these two are, sorry, there is a correction over here. This is virtual and direct. Since these two reflected rays are diverging, we will extend them backwards and wherever they meet, virtual image is formed. So, virtual image is always erect in nature, which means that if the head of the object is up, then the head of the image must also be up. Wherever you have the object, if you get the image on the same side, that means it has to be real. That means it has to be a real image. But if the image is behind the mirror, definitely that has to be a virtual image, right? So, virtual and direct, the image is behind the mirror, behind the mirror. No need to specify where exactly it is, right? And the object is between F and P. And finally, enlarged or magnified image is formed. So, guys, it was my attempt to explain you with the animation. Please do ask your doubts if you have any and thank you very much for watching the video.